The primary goal in the recruiting process is to find the right match between a school and a student athlete. Similar to finding a good wife, you know, you have to meet, talk, and date your own share of ladies. The college process is very similar. But at this point, college coaches are very busy. Every year they meet hundreds of new recruits while coaching the athletes they already have. So in this relationship, it's up to you, the student athlete, to pursue coaches and keep the lines of communication open. As a freshman or sophomore, your first round of emails and calls will have slow periods with limited activity. The NCAA designed it that way to minimize early recruiting. The key is to continue your process moving forward and hitting your major milestones. Your commitment to the process will give you an advantage and a leg up on many other recruits who aren't doing what you're doing. So as you develop relationships with coaches through camps, phone calls, social media, you'll be energized by the results you're getting from your efforts. It's important that you learn when and how to contact coaches with the right topics of communication. So we developed a communication plan that you should follow. Remember, although coaches are not allowed to like, DM, share, or retweet with you until September 1st of your junior year, they could still friend you, follow you, and see your direct messages. You could also talk to them at any time if you pick up the phone and call and they actually answer. If you're an underclassman, review the recruiting timeline section for freshman and sophomore athletes. You should be communicating with your target schools about the following subjects. Introduce yourself to all 60 schools in your funnel. Prior to attending camps, you should always be letting them know that you're going to be attending. Share your highlight tape every three or four games during the season so you show your progress, not just waiting to the end of the season. Respond to any letters that you've received from the school. That includes questionnaires or camp invites. Take the opportunity to contact the coach. Congratulate them on a big win. Any of your personal accomplishments or team awards, you should be letting the coach know that. And your plans to visit the school, even if you can't meet with them because you're not a junior yet. Share any academic achievements that you've had to show them that you're still on track for the admission requirements. Once you hit your junior and senior year, it's important to start emailing, DMing, and calling more often, about once or twice a month. At this point, the coaches can respond to all your private messages, including emails and DMs. So we could add these things to the previous list. You should be in contact with them about asking for advice on what satellite camps or combines to attend, um, letting them know anytime you receive a scholarship offer from another school, sharing your game schedule with them as an invitation for them to attend a game, and you want to know where you rank in terms of your position for their recruiting class. What do they need from you in order to extend a scholarship offer? Let them know that you signed up for the NCAA or NAIA eligibility center. Follow up with them after a campus visit. Follow up after attending a college camp. Inquire about the recruiting timeline. Are they going to offer you an official visit? There are a lot of other reasons to contact a coach. It's always good to congratulate him on every win or milestone achieved by the program. It shows your level of interest and it demonstrates your loyalty and willingness to commit if you are offered by them. Nowadays, there are multiple ways to communicate with a coach and we suggest that you use all of them. Email is the best platform that you can use to update and revise these items throughout your recruiting process. It's important that you send all your emails with a read receipt since they can't respond to you until your junior year. Strangely enough, phone calls are rarely used by student athletes. Hence, it's a great opportunity for you to distinguish yourself. It demonstrates your maturity and that you're proactive and that you're determined to achieve your goal. This is the best way to develop a better relationship with a coach. As an underclassman, it's the only way that you could actually speak to coaches besides attending a camp. Social media is a great platform to use early in the process when combined with emails. Once you know your area recruiter, DM him with a link to your recruiting film. Your message should state that there's more information in a provided email that I sent on, you know, such and such date. Since you don't know which vehicle he prefers, you should try both and then follow up with a phone call. Texts become much more effective during the junior and senior year because coaches can respond at this point. It is also the preferred platform for student athletes. Of course, it is important to keep your messages professional because coaches, they're not your friends. They're not your buddies. You're still being recruited. Regardless of which method you use, you should be professional and respectful. If a coach leaves any type of message, make sure you respond within 24 hours. Review any message you send once or twice before hitting send. Check your grammar and spelling in order to always give your best impression.